Okay, the, uh, the reason why I decided to use, to model mouse is because most of engineers who, who use CAD, they have to use a mouse. I know, I know 90% of the participants, they have a mouse. I said, why don't you try to model a mouse? So that next time we can maybe try to model a pen. Because if you if if you can model the basic items in CAD, you can be able to model more complex items. And I decided let's start with a mouse. Yeah. And this session will be more of interactive session. I'll be slow for you to understand. Step at a time. Ask anything in the comment session, and I will keep in touch. Yeah, this is a mouse we are going to model today. And before I start, I'm usually a fan of keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to use six, six keyboard shortcuts only. On, in your own shape, you can see this icon here. This is a keyboard shortcuts. I'll, I'm going to use L for line to sketch a line. Then I'm going to use U. I'll be pressing U for me to convert entity to use. To dimension, I'll be using D to dimension. D dimension, convert entity, U, L for line. Then for horizontal, I'll be pressing H horizontal, vertical, V. Last three, normal, if, on, if when sketching, if you want the sketch plane to be normal to you, I'll be using N, N for normal. Yeah, I usually use most of this, but today I'll just use six, six of them. L for line, U for use, D for dimension, H for horizontal, V for vertical, and N for normal. Okay. Yeah. This is a mouse we are going to draft. Then the first thing we need to understand how to draft this mouse. Where do you start? Okay. We can start from top to bottom or, or from bottom to top. I prefer starting from side side view going up therefore in this mouse if i go front view i'm on the front view a surface model in on ship is usually driven by a sketch or curve as you can see you can see this curve there's this curve here you see that curve you can see another curve here these are the curves that derive the surface model in on ship and if you generate these curves well, you get a nice model. The secret of surface modeling is generating good curves. Therefore, checking from the front view, I can see this curve here that is driving this surface from the front view. Same, same curve, top view, drives the top profile. You can see this curve here. Press F to fit. It is driving the top profile. The same curve is driving the side profile. Therefore, we need to generate that curve. That, that will be our step one. Okay. Therefore, I have, if you want to start a new part studio, you just go to the plus icon. You create a part studio. Yeah. I've already started my path studio. Therefore, as I said, we have this, I'm going to start from top. I need to sketch this curve, this curve here, but from top. From top looks like this. Therefore, you select the top plane, sketch, then normal to the top plane. Okay. Uh, I hope we are audible. When I, yeah, okay, I hope so. 
um, we need not to, to sketch that profile. I'm, I'm going to use spline. You can see spline here. Most of the time, you can customize your S key on the keyboard to have all these icons here. But for now, I'll be using the icons directly. Spline. You have to make you have to make one spline maybe from this point to this point and another spline two splines in total from this point to this point then you have to drag this handle make it vertical the same case to this make it vertical this horizontal i'm using v for vertical V vertical, H for horizontal, H horizontal, H horizontal. That's the first, those are the first two splines we need. Dimension wise, I'm using D, S key, D command on the keyboard to dimension. From this point to this point, use 50. From this point to this point, use 50. I'm pressing F. Zoom to fit. Then the height of this one to be 46. The height of this one to be 33. This point from this, from the origin, is supposed to be 25.8. If you want to hide, if you want to hide the prints, you can press P. P to hide the prints. P for prints, hide and show prints. Uh, then this one here is, this one is 18. Then this one is also 18. This handle here is also 18. We have to ensure that our sketch is fully defined. This point from the origin is 10.8. And your sketch turns black, it is fully defined. Okay. okay. Then next step is this. Remember this, the top profile, the one I, I indicated on our mouse. We need not to define the side profile. You can rename this sketch as a top profile. That. This is the top profile that defines the top contour of the mouse. Then you go to the front. We also define the front profile. We have defined this profile. Let's go to the front. We, know, we, know, we need not to sketch this curve on the front plane. You select front plane, you sketch. Same case applies. I'm using splines, two splines. This plane, like that. Another spline. Splines are here, all here. I've already customized my S key. Make, make sure they touch. This is the side profile we want to sketch. Let me let me start again. On the front plane, create a spline like that. Another spline like that. Then this one, this handle, spline handle, you can see this one here. Make it horizontal by pressing H, horizontal, also this horizontal, this horizontal. Dimension-wise, ensure this point, and this point is vertical, 
press V for them to be vertical. Same case to these two points, press V for them to be vertical. Dimension from this point to this point, we need seven. From this point to this point, we need 12. This one is 20. This one is 18. Also, this is 18. We can use equal 18. This one is this one and this, they're supposed to be equal. You can use equal or, or you can press E, E for equal. Then the center point, this point here to the origin, always use 10.8. Then this point to origin, the height, the height of this point, you can, you can rotate a little bit for you to select origin is supposed to be 25.8. And you can see my sketch is fully defined. Yeah, sketch is fully defined. This one is called side profile. We have these two profile. I have top profile and side. When, when they combine, they form this curve here. They form this curve. And they combine therefore how do you combine to make a 3d curve we use what we call projected you pr projected curve you go to this place here you select projected curve meaning i want to select it needs two sketches two sketches my first sketch is top you project the top to side basically it combines these two sketches such that from top view and from the side view they are the same from the, they are similar to the sketches if you select okay if i go top view you can see it is similar to the top profile when you go top view when you go side view that's the front similar to the side profile and this is the curve we need that is driving the side surface of the mouse then after getting this curve we need to create first surface a surface that will be used as a reference therefore i need a reference surface therefore i need to extrude the surface here instead of using extrude i'm going to use what is called ruled surface if you select a ruled surface it needs for you to select a path Okay, this is the path for the ruled surface. Then there are four types of uh, ruled surface. I'm going. I want my surface. I want this surface to be perpendicular to the top plane. To be perpendicular to the top plane. For this surface to be perpendicular to the top plane, I have to use aligned with direction option. The election is top plane. If you select top plane, you can see the surface now is generated and the surface is perpendicular. You can see this is the top plane. It is perpendicular to the top plane. You can use 15. The surface is just for reference. Reference, reference surface. Yeah, I'm going to use this as a reference similar to construction elements okay going back to the mouse next we need we need now to define this curve we have defined this curve here we have already... next step is to define this curve define this curve you can see and define this back curve. We need to define these three. That's our next step. These three curves. Then later we form a surface. Therefore, going back to the to the to the part studio. To start on the, I'm going to start by this one and this one here. These two curves to define them. Therefore, those two curves are on the front plane. Therefore, on the front plane. Let's create a sketch. 
I'd press N, normal view, N to see normal. I want to create a line, a construction line here, like that. This is for construction. How do you convert a line to construction? You press Q on your keyboard, or you, you select this one, this icon here. You can see this one here. If you select this, then select this one here. Same case applies. Then dimension, I want to drop a point here. Drop a point, select a point, drop it here for ease of dimensioning. Then B for dimension from this point to this point, use 46.5. From this point to this point, use 45.8. You need a curve that connects this point to this point. Therefore, you select three point arc. Select this point. Select this point like that. Drop it somewhere. Then ensure this curve. Remember we said this surface is our reference surface. Therefore, I'm going to reference it use this curve this edge make them tangent go here select tangent or you press t t for tangent t for tangent press t same case applies arc from this point to this point here this edge your curve and tangent becomes free defined these are the two curves i said we are going to generate then we need a reference a reference surface from these two curves. Therefore, extrude. In this case, I'm going to extrude a surface using these two curves. Reverse direction. Use new. Don't add. Just use new. We adjust our references. Okay. Next, we need we need now this middle curve here. We have this already, now we need this middle curve. Again, the middle curve lies on this point, meaning we need a plane, a plane that passes through this point or through this line. This plane must be parallel to this plane, but passes through this point. Therefore, you select this plane. I want the plane to be parallel to the right plane. At the same time, I want that plane to pass through that point. Select those two and select plane. You can see. Now I have my plane at this point, plane one. This plane is parallel to this plane, but passes at this point. I don't need this one, I can hide it. Yeah. Let's now have a sketch on this plane. Sketch on this plane, sketch. N to normal, F to fit. Then I need a line first for construction, L, L for line. Then change for, change to construction element. This dimension is 33.1. I need a spline, a spline here. This plane must start at this point. You see this point here? It's plane to start from that point. Drop it to the line. Just select any place on the line, like that. Then press escape. From this point, if you go back to normal, from this point to this point, dimension is 23. From this point to this point, use 23. Then make this vertical, this handle to be vertical. Then the dimension is 13. This one is um, this one is 62 dimension from this point to this point, 62. Height of this is four. It becomes fully defined. You can see it's fully defined. Yeah. That's our another sketch that is fully defined. 
you can hide this frame yeah now we have everything we need on the side we have this curve this this curve and this curve but something is missing we don't have this curve the bottom one we need this bottom one here the bottom curve so that we have for surface we need a closed contour we have top we have this but we, we are missing this one bottom one let's now create our last sketch on the side profile for the side profile or for the side surface on the top plane let's go to the top plane you can rotate like this fit now we need a plane you can see this i need a plane that pass not a plane a sketch that touches this point and touches these two points that connect these two therefore basically is this point here this point this point they need to be connected by a sketch therefore i use i'm going to use again uh splines here another spline this point to this point like that this one vertical v for vertical vertical h for horizontal h for horizontal make sure that this point if you rotate make sure that this point and this point they are coincident coincident they touch they have, they have to touch like that then let's now dimension this this to be 36 this one to be 20 is to be 18 in then this and this to be equal select this one and select this select equal you can see equal or press e equal to make sure that for your sketch to work from this point to this point you must get 23 if you don't get 23 something is not okay as you can see now our mouse is now starting to get shape i have this i have these side sketches now i can create a surface here using the available sketches okay therefore i'm going to use boundary surface i want to create a boundary of surfaces here therefore select boundary surface boundary surface needs u profiles and v profiles it is similar to the loft whereby maybe whereby in loft you select the profile and guidelines if you select this loft here have some similarity whereby we have profiles and guidelines but in boundary we have u and v u i want this to connect to this you see it is connecting but now we need to provide some guidelines then it is connecting directly now the v profile they provide the guide this to this you can see the surface is formed don't select add just use new something very important is let me first for select select okay let's do some analysis of this surface we have just created if you go to this icon go to curvature visualization zebra stripes you can see that this surface has some doesn't has good con we don't have good continuity this one is called surface analysis you have to analyze your surface to make sure that they we have they have a smooth continuity you can see here we don't have smooth if let me show you how we fix that going back to the boundary surface i want this surface to be tangent 
to this surface, this section of surface to be tangent to this. Okay. Therefore, I have to go back to extrude one. For the boundary condition, this condition here, by default is none. I want this to be tangent. Therefore, this surface and this surface becomes tangent to each other. Okay. If I go back to the zebra stripes here, let's see what happens. You can see now we have smooth continuity because now this surface and this surface is tangent. Lastly, same case applies to the back side. You have to activate your sketch. It is good habit to rename your features here. But now, because of time, I want to rename, but be, be remaining them. Rename for ease of troubleshooting. Therefore, next is another boundary surface between this one and this edge. You can see. Just say merge, unselect merge with all. I want this surface to merge with this surface this two to be one surface. Therefore, you have to unselect merge all and select the surface you need. V profile this and this. Same case applies for the U. You have to select match tangent so that this surface and this surface becomes tangent to each other. Same case applies to the back surface, this surface to be tangent. Therefore, for the U profile, select match tangent. This surface and this surface becomes tangent to each other. Now you have, we have our side profile. These ones are just for reference. You can delete it. Let me first for delete this one here. You can see we have side surface of our mouse, which is this here. Okay. That was our first step to generate this surface. That is a side one. This one are just this one are just for the reference. I will delete them later, but for now they can. Yeah, I can also delete them by the way, because they are just for reference. Yeah, I don't need them. I don't need them again. Step two now is this one is a side surface. Maybe I can you can put in a folder. Yeah, let's say side surface. It's very good to be organized. The more you are organized, the more it becomes easy for someone else to use your model or to or to troubleshoot something. Step two is now we need now to generate this surface top surface here all this once we generate those surfaces we are going now to mirror to the other side i go back to the model you can see the, we have a curve you have to identify these curves yeah we have this curve i need to generate this curve this one here the one i have i highlighted also we have another curve here these curves are on the this curve also we need to generate it which is on the top plane therefore we need a plane from this point to this point is about 15. from the front plane therefore we go to the front plane here. We offset a plane by 15. 15 here, like that. Okay. Um, then going back to the mouse, we also have this curve. You can see this curve here, the mid one. We also need that one. We're going to generate four curves, four sketches. This sketch 
this sketch for this curve, this curve, and also this front curve here. Because if you check from the front view, you see this shape. We have to generate this shape also at the same time. Therefore, let's go one by one. We need a sketch on our plane one. Let me activate plane one. Let's start by this curve. Let's first for generate this curve that connects to this. You can see this one, how they connect. We need now to generate this. Therefore, a, a curve that connects this, it is on the plane one. Sketch on this plane, like that. You can first for hide this, you can hide whatever you are not using. Then I need a, a line, L for line from this point, go vertical. Then for construction, dimension is 37.3. 37.3, that's the dimension. You need a spline from this point to this point here. And, oh, oops, from this point, this point and this point, they have to touch, coincident. They have to touch, make this vertical, make this horizontal. Dimension, this one is a 10. This one is five. Fully defined. Now this is a sketch that is going to control our our front profile from the from this direction. We need a, another sketch now on our plane two. I'm not using this plane, hide it. We, next, we need this sketch, this sketch here, this curve. Therefore, you go to plane two and sketch that one, number two. Before I sketch on this, uh, I need to generate a reference plane, a reference surface using this edge. First of all, select this edge and extrude. I like using surfaces as a reference, 15 here, yeah. 15. Then you can go back to plane one or plane two and sketch. I'm using N for normal view. Then, as you can see, I need a line. I want to, I want to capture where this plane, this plane two is intersecting this surface. If if you want to know where this plane is intersecting the surface, you use what we call intersection. Where do they intersect? If you select intersection, and this surface, you can see we have this sketch. It means the plane is intersecting this surface at this at this point. This one make it for construction because I want to use this one as my reference sketch. Therefore, then splines one spline from this point to this point. Another spline. Let's put it somewhere there to this point. Then make sure that this point and PS, use PS like that. Then this one and this, make them parallel, be parallel like that. Uh, this one, make it horizontal, H for horizontal. This V for vertical. I'm trying to get then the height. Let, let's first of all have a line just for construction. Yeah, for construction. Eh? From sent from the origin to this point, just for construction. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, I need not to dimension this one here. This to be 12. Also, this to be 12. Therefore, this and this to be equal. This and this to be 
equal. This point is, you can see it can move on to now dimension this. It is 23 from this line, 23, okay? Then it is 26 along X axis from this point to this point, yeah? 26, like that. This, the, this spline and this to be tangent, make sure these are tangent, these two. Then I need to control the angle of this, that is a D for dimension, this one to the line to be 23. Back side is free defined, let's now free define front side, this to be 6 becomes free defined. You can see, now it is fully defined. Okay. Going back to the mouse, now I need to generate, I need to generate this profile on the front plane. You go to the front plane. Yeah. I hope I'm not fast, so fast. Yeah. I go to the front plane now to generate this profile therefore you go to the front plane not plane two to the front plane here you can hide this i'm using i'm using y to hide or you can just like click and hide you can like click the plane and hide or press y and hide yeah therefore i want to show front i want to sketch on this front plane Again, I need this point. I want to use this point and this point. Select those two points and select use, or you can use you, you for use, like that. Also, this point, because I want a spline from this point to this point here. Another spline from this point to this point. And I want this one to be horizontal, this to be vertical, dimension is 15, 15, this is 16, fully defined, horizontal, vertical, this and this, equal, therefore this one is a 12, becomes fully defined. You can see now the, the top profile is it has some shape. Then, last three, we need this sketch, this one here. Therefore, I go back to the, I need a plane at this point here. At this point, this point to capture. Taking some time to load. Yeah, that's fine. You can hide this. Now, last three, we need a sketch onto this plane. Okay. I just want to see where this plane and this sketch, where they intersect. Okay, I need one is a spline, spline here, I, two splines. It starts from, some, just use somewhere, and you have to go to this point, you have to terminate, terminate at this point, spline one. Spline two, start from this point, terminate at this edge. Therefore, you select this point and this edge use as this point, this edge, and use pierce. Yeah, like that. Again, this point, this one, use pierce, like that. This to be horizontal. This one to be vertical. We need to control this angle. Therefore, I need a line at this point here, vertical line to dimension from. 
Therefore, this one for this line for construction, I want to dimension from this line. Therefore, this line and this one is supposed to be 82. This one is five, length of five. This and this make them equal. Therefore, then also this is this and this equal. These two are supposed to be equal. They mention this as four, like that. This one to be not fully defined. This and this to be tangent. Then, let's see, go to the front view. This also, let me see, this is supposed to be five. Yeah, it's already five. Uh, let's see. Let's use, uh, let's use this one, yeah? Yeah, sometimes sprints, you might not get some fully defined. Let me delete this here. Uh, yeah, let me just delete this PS. Okay, therefore, I want this one and this to be tangent. Therefore, and this point point out. Make sure this point, at this point, they are coincident. Use just okay, use PS. Yes, yeah. We can work with that. Uh, therefore, the most important thing is to ensure they touch this point, touch this, and this point touch. They have to touch. Now let's now create some surfaces. Let's create some surfaces now. On this edge, I need to extrude a different surface, maybe 10 other direction. That's for reference. We need now to create a surfaces here. First one is a boundary surface between these two V profile, this and this. Let's use new. The first one to apply tangent to this one. The, then the second one here, the profile to be tangent to this face. Therefore, this one is tangent to this face. Okay. Let's see. Okay. Again, another pro, another boundary surface. Let's activate my sketches here. Yeah. I want. Uh, let me hide this sketch. I want to use this edge of the surface. Then I want to use this edge. I don't want to use the curve. Let me use, let me, I'm hiding the curve so that I can select the edge. You hide, hide this curve so that you select the edge of the surface. For the V, this one here, activate your sketch, sketch five and select this sketch just use the new because i need this surface to be and select match with all and select this surface so that these two surface becomes one surface okay for this one here we can use match tangent so that these two surfaces are tangent to each other Okay, for this one here also you can use match tangent so that, okay, this one you can't use. If Just go back to normal for this, yeah. These are now the two boundary surfaces that combine. These are now just one surface. Okay, then we have to go back here. Now let's go, let's not create this surface this back section, you go to the front plane, just go back to the front plane and sketch there. I want to convert entity 
use this sketch here. I want us to use a split. I want us to split this one. Just select split, put a point here. And dimension from this point to this point to be 25. Yeah. Then delete back section like that. Because now we can hide this, hide this sketch. I'm pressing Y on the as a keyboard shortcut. I want I want now to create a boundary surface between these two edge. By the way, on the boundary surface, you can select one edge, not a must for you to select two edges. Yeah, you can see I've just used one edge as a new profile, V is one. On this one here, let's go with a match tangent. Match tangent there, fine, yeah. Then we need not generate this curve. You see this curve here? We have this is the surface we have created here now this curve so that we trim go to the front not front top plane and create let me show my sketch my surface here this point use this point and use this point i'm pressing you spraying from this point to this point here this to be vertical, this to be horizontal, this to be nine, this to be six. Yeah, like that. Because I want to trim, split, I want to split, split, select split this phase using this sketch. Yeah, because I want to delete, I want to delete this back section here so that I found this, this this is what I'm forming right now, you can see. Therefore, let me, now let's hide this sketch, press Y. We need now to form a boundary surface between, on this back section here. Go to sketch five, sketch six here, the sketch that was on the, and select boundary surface. Print. And this edge, V profile, this one here. You can select multiple. If you just select this drop down, you can add multiple like that. Then, yeah, you can do two selections under one selection. Then select this. That's our border surface, new. Let's use new. I want this surface and this surface to be tangent, therefore. On this selection here, select match tangent. Yeah. Now this surface and this surface becomes tangent to each other. Okay. Now you can hide this. Now you can finish the remaining section. Go back to sketch seven. Show this sketch. Boundary between these two. Boundary surface. Boundary surface is very important. Very powerful tool in on shape. Profile this and this, like that. For this one, the first one, I want tangent. For this one, huh? doesn't allow. Let's go back to normal. Sometimes it doesn't allow. Let's go, let's try this. Match tangent. I want this section here. I'm selecting this one. You can see edge. I'm using this, I want these two to be tangent to each other. Lastly, we can now loft. We can finalize this section here by using loft. Let's loft. At least we use a new command. I need this profile and this. I don't want to use sketch. Yeah. Let me first for hide this sketch. Sketch seven. Yeah. Hide sketch. I want us to use the edge of a surface not a sketch therefore for the profile use this i'm using an edge of a surface and this edge then continuity guideline select this you can see we have a sharp edge here you can see we have the starting profile we have to select match tangent 
so that you can have a smooth continuity, you know, becomes smooth, you can see, it becomes smooth, yeah. Also I need, let me go back to the loft, also I need here to be much tangent, you can use 0.5, you cannot try to change the magnitude, you can try to play with this value and to see what you get, but let, let's use one as our default. Okay. This one don't need it. Even this, these two, you can delete them. Then you can use Boolean to combine these two surfaces to one. I'm using Boolean. Now we have one surface. You can see here, surface is just one. Yeah. Next is we need not to create this. You can see we have some spaces here. They are not touching. This two, this two space. Then this cut out. Then the wheel. Then you'll be done. Okay. Going back to the front side. Let's first of all go back to the side profile. Show this. I'm going to use this side profile to create my side sketch. Let me hide this plane. I'm going to use this, this one here. I can hide this, I don't need this one here. Sketch six, you can hide that, okay? Therefore, on the front, sketch, yeah? New sketch, use this, press U, press U, then offset, on to offset by 0.3. Select offset up by 0.3. Done. Yeah. Same case applies. But I'm going to use that sketch to create this cutout here. Then another sketch we need is also we have this cutout from top view. Therefore, going back to the sketch. The sketch we used on the top profile, let me look for it. Uh, sketch, yeah, sketch three. Sketch three. Let me hide the surface. Let me show this, yeah, yeah. This, this is a sketch I need. Also go back to the front plane, new sketch. Convert entity, I'm pressing use, offset this like that, 0.3. Now you can activate the sketch. Yeah, I have these two sketches that I'm going to use to split my surface. Split, split face, select face, this, all these faces here. You split them. Then, Make sure you select everything. Split using sketch 10. I'm using sketch 10 to create that cutout. You can see we have done split. Again, split face. Don't use part, select face, all this face here. Then use sketch 11. Yeah, now you can hide sketches. I'm using Shift P, Shift P, hide those sketches, Shift P. Then we need to delete all these sections here. Just select delete face, delete this, delete this cut, this space, this face, delete this one here, delete this, delete this also delete here leave open delete this one here and this like that you can see then we need now to perform this one is a left let's now do the mirror part to mirror select everything mirror plane use on to mirror to get 
the other side, this front, and select add. Yeah, it adds, it will add the common surfaces. Yeah, like that. I want to, this opening, you can use fill, use fill to close this bottom section. Yeah, like that. Also, fill at this edge. You can use six or five, like that. Then, I'm going to, I want to, Vicken, I want to vacant the all the surfaces, but we can take some time. I'll just vacan one section under the middle section by 2, 0.25. I'm going to vacan only the middle section by 0.25. It's because the I don't want to vacan everything because we can take you can see regeneration time. We can takes a lot of time. You can see if you select this crock. They can takes a lot of time for the for it to be generated. Therefore, you can they can others by 0 0.25. If you want, you can assign appearance on the middle section to be white, top section assign appearance to be maybe this, bottom section you can assign appearance or maybe to be gray or this, yeah, whatever you prefer. Okay. Lastly, we need this cutout and this and this uh, wheel. I go back to the mouse, the cutout. I need a sketch on the top plane so that I can split this surface and delete that surface. Therefore, you go to the top plane. You can rotate if you want to rotate on your side. I need a slot here. Let's create a line here like that of dimension 10.5. You can use a slot like that of diameter, press F to fit, diameter six like that. Then from this point, Okay, from this point here, use this point because I want, when I say use, I mean convert the entity. You press U, you can see here, use. You press U to project or convert the entity. They mention this point here, the center here, to be 10.5. Press F to fit. Then corner rectangle like that. I want to drop a point here at the middle, like that. Then make sure this point, uh, this point and this point are horizontal. Okay. And I want to dimension this rectangle to be 0.7. This to be 70. 20, let me use, oh, not 70, 50. Then from this point to this point, and use uh, at least four. Then on now to select, okay. I want to use this sketch to split. Select split, a face. Select these four faces here. Split with your sketch. You can see, okay, you can see. Then you delete. Delete these faces here, all of them. Delete, delete, like that, you can see. When you weaken, you will apply fillets on these corners, apply fillets later. Okay, now we need our wheel. Our wheel is on the front plane. That's where we have our wheel, this one here with these cutouts. Therefore, you go to the front plane, sketch, no more. 
Just Sako, C for Sako. Div to dimension. This one to be 25. Yeah. I don't have these dimensions of head. I'm just, I have them in another screen. Um, therefore, from this point here, from this point to this point, I'm using um, 41. Then 41. Then from this point to the bottom one here, I'm using 15. Yeah, like that. That's my sketch for the wheel, extrude, symmetry, six. Like that. Uh, not a surface, a solid. Select solid, again, your sketch, six. You can see we have some interference, therefore we need to fill it. Use full round, full round, first side, this side, Second phase, use this phase. The phase to fill it is this phase. Yeah. F full route is a very powerful tool to use when you want to fill it. Okay. Yeah. Lastly, those cutouts, you go back to the front plane, new sketch. How to show this sketch here. Like that. Another one here. Like that. For construction. From this point to this point. 3.5. Therefore, this one you can go a little bit down here. Come here. The national, this one to be 0.5. I want to drop this a 3D interfere. There is a little bit I like that. Then this one to be 12.5. Yeah. Fine. Then we can cut this cutouts here. We can revolve cut. Remove. It is a solid. Remove. This is my sketch. The axis is this axis here. Yeah, can see. You can fill it them if you want. Shift, Shift P to hide sketches. And lastly, we need to circular pattern those cutouts. Pattern here, I'm using not part, a feature pattern. You are revolve an axis. You can select this edge here, or can use mid connector. Use just use this edge and use 50. Is it the loads? And our mouse is done. Oh, it's usually a cloud-based software. Everything happens in cloud. Other desktop-based card softwares, you have to install in your desktop, in your machine, in your laptop. But on ship, you just need an account. You only need an, an, an account, like a Facebook, and strong internet. Everything happens in cloud. That's the difference. How does Onshape handle version control and document management to ensure accuracy and consistency in design? For example, this model of Onshape, this of the mouse, if I want to save this one, I can do, you can, you can do a version, you can see here, icon, version, and you can give it a name in case I come back after one month, then I realize something is missing. Let me delete, I want to delete some. I can always go back and see how the model was even after one year. I can go back to the versions and the history. I can act activate how it was. You can always go back to history. That's the power of Onship. Even after 10 years, you can go back to how the design was the first day you started, but you need That's stable true. internet. Can Onshape handle schematics like AutoCAD? Onshape has an extra add-in. You can see here, we have App Store, App. There's an extra add-in that go direct to the Onshape. 
that can handle the schematics. It is called, if you go to the app store here, it is called Electra, Electra Cloud. Mm -hmm. Onship has very many add-ins. Even for the CAM, you can get computer-aided manufacturing add-in. It has simulations add-in. It has so many add-ins. But... They ask, can you import existing mouse design on Onshape and modify them for your needs? Yes, you can export. You can see? Export. You can export to step file. You can use Parasolid. All the, you can use STL to see the format here. All these formats, SOLIDWORKS, Rhino, STL. If you want to 3D print, you can use STL format and export your model to 3D print. Can the designs made through Onshape be used for 3D printing? Yes, you can 3D print anything you have designed in Onshape by exporting using STL format. If you use STL format, yeah, STL, can see? Now you can 3D print that file.